12 tribes of Israel. He said, I'm married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. See? You see that? Go to Jeremiah 6 and 2. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. So he, he likened the daughter of Zion, Zion represents the 12 tribes of Israel, to a comely, a beautiful, and delicate woman, it's saying. So when you look at, uh, the understanding of what's being said here, it's very important that you see that The Most High loves us. And to prove that, that Zion is talking about the children of Israel, go to Isaiah 51 and 16. And I have put my words in thy mouth, and I have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand, that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth and say unto Zion, Thou art my people. See? That's that Zion. I say the Bible answers itself. So we just have to be uh, you know, aware of these things so that you can uh, know what this Bible is talking about. Because we're rolling in it. It's just a matter of how we're going to uh, have works that could be Worthy enough to we can be found worthy to our names be written in the book of life. If not, then your only only other choice is the sword. The hellfire that's coming on this earth. Cold boy, but it's true. So we symbolically married to the most high. He divorced us and gave us to us, gave us to his son. I gave I got a lesson on that also, you know. Are we married and divorced and Given to a Mashiach, I was shy. That's why we Mashiach him today. Cold, boy. When I think about it, how uh, it's getting so close. A lot of people don't even realize it. They're still doing everything they're doing. You think they're being slick, and the Most High revealing everything. The last days, the very last days, and all these prophecies you know, was talked about. It's happening. It's happening, people. What you gonna do when he come for you? So every last one of them will have to give a count. So 
So let's look at uh Second Ezra sixteen and thirty four. Second Ezra sixteen thirty four. In the wars shall their bridegrooms be destroyed. That's why I tell you in verse 33. Let me see, that's, I need I want to go up some from there. I want to. Let's jump up to verse, uh, man, this is a good chapter. <laughs> Let's start at, uh, second chapter 16 and verse 13. For strong is his right hand that beneath the bow. His right hand, we know who's on the right hand, Mosiah, Mashiach, Yavashiah, that beneath the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the earth, right? That's why I look at, uh, so when you look up in the Bible compact, the uh, Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, when you look up Edom, uh, it says, Edom or Edomites Edom it says the nation and its people who were the descendants of Esau it says Edom figures probably in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgments see nobly Isaiah 34 and 5 and 6 Isaiah 63 1 down she is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from the Most High. That's from the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. So, and it tells you in 2 Ezra 6 and 9, for Esau is the end of the world, meaning Esau had to be ruling at the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. So the children of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel have next, we got next, forever and ever and ever. With the Most High and the Mashiach Kalvashah. So it says in 2nd Ezra 16 13 it says for strong is his right hand that be bendeth the bow his arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world right so he's <coughs> The Edomites just gave an account of Isaiah 34, 5 and 6. These things are going to happen. That's where it's just a matter of where you're going to be at when they start to go down on a higher level. But you have no excuse because you're going to hear the prophecy. Isaiah 34, 5. This is what they gave us to look at. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. So I have the de definition of Idumia from the Compact Bible Dictionary. Jewish Dictionary. It says Idumia. The definition of Idumia pertaining to Edom. Greek and Roman name for Edom. The Edomites, so-called white man. So... This is what they tell us to look at. So, so it says the soul going to be bathed in heaven. Heaven is on this earth. It shall come down upon Idumia. We're we talking about these arrows, these missiles. That's all we can think of now. That's going to be shot in the ends of the earth. It says, for my soul shall be bathed in heaven. Right here on this earth. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Most High is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats. 
with the fat of the of the kidneys and of rams, for the most high had to sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumia, the Edomite's land. Look, you gotta hear what he's saying. Uh, Isaiah 34 and 2. That's what they gave. Let's look at it more in depth. For the indignation of the Most High is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies. And we read in 2 Ezra 13, 9 and 10, there's going to be nothing but dust and smell of smoke of their armies. He have utterly destroyed them. He have delivered them to the slaughter. You hear this? Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. You know the kingdom will be melted with their blood everywhere they are. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. You hear that? All the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And all their hosts shall fall down. All their armies shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine. And as a falling fig from the fig tree. You see this? You hear the word of the Most High. I'm telling you. It's, it's all in the Bible. It's all here. It's all here. Uh, another one letting you know. Uh, Isaiah 13 and 9. Behold, the day of the Most High cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. You hear that? So all you that commit iniquity, sins, wickedness, he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. That's how much destruction is going to be. You ain't going to see no stars in heaven. Because you ain't going to see no but soot from the destruction. The sun should be darkened in his going forth. You ain't going to see no sun because it will be nothing but destruction. His indignation. And the moon shall not cause the light to shine because it ain't going to be nothing but destruction. You ain't going to see no moon, no sun, nothing. No stars, anything. It's going to see soot in the air. And I will punish the world for their evil. Hear what he said? You're going to punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Hmm. This judgment. Verse 19. In Babylon, America, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the child deeds, excellency, shall be as when the Most High overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. I mean, he brought something down from heaven. He said he burned it, but he still left the remnants of it with the sulfur, whatever material it is. That, when you see the design of a building, design of all these different structures, but it's closed in with this soot or whatever, just sulfur, whatever it is that he used to burn it up, you can see. It's just... You know it's a building. You can't walk in it because it's closed in. You can look at look up Sodom and Gomorrah. And it's something to behold. It says, It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. See? Never gonna live. Nobody gonna live here. Ever. 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 Just say the most high. Um Go to Revelation. Sixth chapter. And verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll, like the when it is rolled together. You know, a scroll when it's rolled together. All you got to do is think about it. If you don't know, 
what he's talking about or this this uh nuclear destruction that's gonna happen. That's all we can say is nuclear, it's gonna be heavier than that because the most high got his hand in it. But look at Nakisaki and Hiroshima when America dropped the bomb on Japan. Them two cities. You'll see how it goes down, the nuclear bomb, it just goes up like a scroll. That's what he's talking about. The heavens the he said, and the heaven departed as a scroll. When it just rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. See? Verse 13, and the stars of heaven fell into the earth. And he's talking about the stars in the sky. He's talking about the stars in this earth. Like movie stars, you know about them. Those of authority fell into the earth. Even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Poof. Done. Verse 15, and the kings of the earth, when this happened, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, that's the stars of heaven, stars on this earth, the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains, and rocks fall on us, hide us from the face of he that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the most high, the Lamb. For great, for the great day of wrath is come. And who is able to stand? Let you know, man, it's coming. It's coming. It's the real. Let's go back to uh second Ezra 16. Verse 14, Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again. Once he sent them, they ain't going to return again until they come upon the earth. They're coming on this earth. That's why I'm warning you. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth. What we just read, the mushroom clouds from the nuclear destruction, like as an arrow, like a, a missile, which is shot of a mighty archer, return of not. An arrow that's shot from a mighty archer, return of not. Backwards. Ain't going backwards once he shoot it forward. It ain't going backwards. Even so, the plagues that shall be sent upon earth shall not return again. Got a plague right now on this earth. Like never seen before. The whole globe shut down. Woe is me, Ezra said. Woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? For you Sadducees-minded Sadducees people that don't believe in reincarnation, why is Ezra saying this? Woe is me. Woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? It's the last days he's talking about. This even happened in our time. But he's saying, who's going to deliver me in those days? Because he know about regeneration, re reincarnation. This is what he said. He finished yet. He said, I mean, destruction is me. He figured out he's going to be destroyed. The beginning of sorrows and great mornings. You know that? The beginning of sorrows and great mornings. The beginning of famine, food shortages, and great deaths. A whole lot of people dying. The beginning of wars, and the powers shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. You know that? The beginning of evils. What shall I do? What shall I do? Ezra said, what shall he do when these evils shall come? Shall come. He know that he's not going to be, he's dying. He's going to die from the time he's living at this time, dropping this prophecy. But he's saying, what was me? What was me? Who would deliver me in those days? How do you explain that? He's going to be here. Behold, famine and plagues, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. That's a, the most high whooping your butt. I mean, he's doing things right now to get everybody's attention. Everybody's should, eyes should be wide awake. You should be in darkness now, seeing all the things going on now. And some of us have lost our loved ones during this plague that the most high put upon us. And you got to look at it. You can blame it on anybody you want to, but the Most High is the one that 
have the issues from death. So he allowed us to go down. It was their time. He said, behold, famine and plague. This is a holy whooping. Famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment to get it right. To make you wake you up and say, I got to get it right. I got to change. I better, better really look at this because a lot of you can't see the butt whooping that he's putting on them. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness. See that? So when you notice, know it's like, you know, pretty soon you know you see all these precepts, you see all the things that the Most High is telling us that have to bring this forth to you in these last days. It's like you become numb, you know, but you still love your people. But it's like it don't affect you as much as it would when you look at all this time. Who really cares? Who really care about really knowing as much as they should know to even to make it to the kingdom? They think they already made it there? I'm holier than thou, as we read, you know, in the previous lesson. Get away from me, I'm holier than thou. Everybody on the same page. Everybody on the same page. You're not looking at this the way it should be looked at. It's going to be sad. It's going to be, be a lot of people perish. You see, Ezra saying, hey, who's going to save me in this day? He's scared. It scared him to hear all these prophecies of the, the times that we in now. But for all these things, verse 20, they shall not turn from their wickedness nor be always mindful of the scourges. Hmm. Say, behold, victuals, food shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. See, things start going back to normal and think you everything is all right. You think everything is in a good case. And even then shall evils grow upon earth. So even then when things are, you know, the economy is rolling again. Say, so even then shall evils be on this earth. Gonna grow on this earth. I mean, it'll be happening more and more and more. Sword, famine, and great confusion. For many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine. Many that dwell on earth gonna die, even though food is cheap. They still gonna die from famine. And the other that escaped the hunger, you escaped the famine, show the sword destroyed. They'll be killed by the modern day sword, the gun. And the dead shall be cast out as dung. And there shall be no more, no man to comfort them. For the earth shall be wasted. And the city shall be cast down. You see right now, people dying and can't even have a proper funeral. I seen where they deal to dig dug a trench. In New York, it was just laying bodies in this big, big trench. No funerals for the loved ones. They were in the white boxes, just cast aside. Put in boxes and just stacked up. Stacked up. They got all these hundreds of thousands empty caskets I mean they're not caskets they're like they're huge what are they going to do with those empty containers put bodies in them like the most I said there should be no man to bury them huh? nobody going to comfort them you know, people, loved ones die. You can't even go see your loved ones and you see them die. They just die in the hospital or nursing homes. And they do whatever they want to do with the bodies. They get in the parts, the different organs and so forth. Well, oh, it's open season for all of that now. You don't get a chance to see your body, your, your loved one at all. Where the autopsies at? They know autopsies. You know, autopsy, all these thousands and thousands and thousands of people that's dying? Nah. 
And you know they already were stealing organs. Ain't just older people that's dying, it's younger people that's dying. A baby died from it. So these are the things that we're looking at could happen and are happening. Great confusion. This is what it say. And the dead shall be cast out as dung. You know what dung is? That's doo doo. And there shall be no man to comfort them. For the earth shall be wasted, and the city shall be cast down. Hear that? There shall no man, there shall be no man left to till the earth and to sow it. I just tell the farmers to stop, stop farming. There shall be no man left to till the earth and to sow it. The trees shall give fruit. And who shall gather them? Can't go outside. The trees shall give fruit, and who shall gather them? The grapes shall ripen, and who shall tread them? For all places shall be desolate of men. Hear that? Everywhere gonna be desolate of men. You with somebody, you gotta, I mean, you next thing you know, you got the plague. You can't work no more. So you gotta send somebody else out there, they get the plague. They can't work no more. Say, hey, that's what it's telling you. The grapes shall ripen, and who shall tread them? Who won't pick the grapes? For all places shall be desolate of men, so that one man shall desire to see another and he, to hear his voice, just to see another and to hear his voice. For, for of a city there shall be ten left, and two of the field, which shall hide themselves in the thick groves and in the clefts of the rocks. As in an orchard of olives upon every tree, there are left three or four olives. Or as when a vineyard is gathered, there are left some clusters of them that diligently seek through the vineyard. Even so, in those days, there shall be three or four left by them that search their houses with the sword. You hear that? Three or four left of them that search their houses with the sword. Matter they saw is the gun. Three or four left of them that's going to be searching in the houses with the gun. And the earth shall be laid waste, and the fields thereof shall wax old, and her ways and all her paths shall grow full of thorns, because no man shall travel there through. Everybody will be traveling. The virgins shall mourn. The virgins going to be crying, weeping, wailing, lamenting. Having no bridegroom, no man to marry. The women shall mourn, having no husbands. Women are going to be mourning because they don't have no husbands. The daughters shall mourn, having no helpers. In the wars, you know, in the wars, wars coming. There shall be bridegrooms, excuse me, in the, in the wars shall their bridegrooms be destroyed. And their husband shall perish of famine. He gonna make sure that they die of hunger. Hear now these things and understand them, ye servants of the Most High. Behold the word of the Most High. Receive it. Believe not the gods of whom the Most High spake. Behold the plagues draw nigh. Plagues draw near and are not slack. As we can see this plague that we're dealing with right now, it's not slack. And when a woman with child is in the ninth month, bringing forth her son, within two or three hours of her birth, great pains can pass her womb. The contractions with pains, when the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. Contractions, you know, as a man, I don't know how they are, but I heard that's one of some of the worst pain you can have. Listen to verse 39. Mark this one. Even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth. So even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth. So you women that have babies, you had hard labor pains. This is what it's talking about. Hard contractions. Even so 
shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth, and the world shall mourn, and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. No matter where you're living at, you can't hide from this. Oh, my people, oh, 12 tribes of Israel, hear my word. Make you ready to the battle. Say, so hear the word of the Most High. Say, make you ready to the battle. And in those evils, be even as pilgrims upon the earth. Might have to relocate, go somewhere else. He that selleth, let him be as he that fled. Excuse me, flee away. And he that buyeth, as one that will lose. You see all the stores set down? He that occupied merchandise, as he that have no profit, buy it. You got a lot of merchandise you're trying to sell. You say you got no profit in selling it. And he that buildeth, as he he that shall not dwell therein. You build in a house that so you might not even get a chance to dwell in it. Long. He that soweth, he that planted, as if he should not reap, as if he's not gonna reap the crops that he's planting. So also he that planted the vineyard as he that shall not gather the grapes. Then you know, hey, you ain't gonna be able to gather the grapes that you plant for your vineyard. They that marry as they that shall get no children and they that marry not as the widows. Like you, like you marry not, but you're gonna be sad because you ain't gonna have no husband. And therefore, they that labor, labor in vain. And therefore, they that labor, labor in vain. For strangers shall reap their fruits and spoil their goods, overthrow their houses, and take their children captives. For in captivity and famine shall they get children. This is us. This happened to us. And they that occupy their merchandise with robbery. Remember they said they're going to be come up in their house. With the sword, the more they deck their cities, their houses, their possessions, and their own persons, the more they deck themselves, their houses, and everything that they have, decking it out, the Most High said, the more will I be angry with them for their sin, said the Most High. The more they make it beautiful and make themselves beautiful, the more will I be angry with them for their sin, said the Most High. Like as a whore, Envious, a right, honest, and virtuous woman. You know, a whore, she enter, she envy of a, a righteous woman. So shall righteousness hate iniquity when she decketh herself and shall accuse her to her face when he cometh that shall defend him that diligently searched out every sin upon earth. Hear that? All them that breaking the laws of the most high. You're going to hate those that break the laws of the Most High. So that's hate right there. So shall righteousness hate iniquity. You being righteous, you're going to hate wickedness and sins and those that are sinners. She deck herself and she accuse, and shall accuse her to her face. When he cometh that shall defend him, that diligently search out every sin upon earth. And therefore be ye not like there unto, nor to the works thereof. Can't be like them. For yet a little, and iniquity shall be taken away out of the earth, and righteousness shall reign among you. Hear that? A little while, wickedness, sins, gonna be taken away out of the earth. And righteousness, those that keep the laws of the most high, shall reign among you. Only those that are righteous gonna reign among you. Let not the sinner say that he is he have not sinned. For the Most High shall burn coals of fire upon his head, which said before the Most High Power and his glory, Hamashiach Yahweh I have not sinned. Hear what he's saying. Behold, the Most High knoweth all the works of men, their imaginations, their thoughts, and their hearts, their minds. What you thinking, which spake but the word, let the earth be made, and it was made. Let the heaven be made, and it was 
created. And his word were the stars made. And he knoweth the number of them. Wow. I told him I shake up shot. It's the angel of the both side, the spirit of the both side. Make the stars. And he know every last star's name. Oof. Man. Hello. Yeah. And his word were the stars made. And he knoweth the number of them. He know the number of them. He searches the deep and the treasures thereof. He hath measured the sea and what it containeth. We can't even go to the bottom of the sea. But he know everything in the sea. He has shut the sea in the midst of the waters. And with his word hath he hanged the earth upon the waters. The earth is hanging on the waters. Everything is from the waters. He spread it out the heavens like a vault upon the waters. Hath he found it. In the desert hath he made springs of water and pools upon the tops of mountains that the floods might pour down from the high rocks to water the earth. Verse 63. Surely he knoweth your inventions. Surely the Most High know your inventions. It ain't been hidden from him. He telling you. Surely, especially you wicked out there, surely he knoweth your inventions. And what he ye think in your hearts. He know what you think in your minds. Even them that sin and would hide their sin. He knows. He said, I know what you're thinking. You think you hide your sin from the most high. He said, Surely he knoweth your inventions. And what ye think in your hearts, what you think in your minds. Even them that sin and would hide them. Hide their sin. Being wicked and think the most I don't see you. And then when he jacked you, what you gonna do? You want somebody to feel sorry for you then. Therefore, have the most high exactly searched out all your works. Searched out everything you done done that's wrong. And he will put you all to shame. He gonna put you to shame. Most I embarrassed you. I done seen it over and over again. Most I embarrass people, boy. He said he's going to put you to shame Playing around with the most high You play around with yourself Really Well you tell me what he's going to do Therefore have the most high Exactly Searched out all your works Everything you're doing He just searched it out And he will put you all to shame And when your sins are brought forth Ye shall be ashamed before men and your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. Hear that? Your own sins that you have done gonna be your accusers in that day. You're gonna put your sins right in front of the whole congregation. Everybody gonna see you. That's why you're gonna shame you. How are you gonna shame you? You're gonna shame you with people seeing your wickedness. You're gonna be exposed. What will you do? Now you say, what you gonna do now? Or how will you be able to hide your sins before the most high and his angels? Hear that? How you going to hide your sin before the Most High and his angels? Behold, the Most High himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins. Stop breaking the laws, touch the commandments of the Most High. And stop teaching people that they don't have to keep the laws of the Most High, you preachers. He said, leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them forever. So shall the Most High lead you forth and deliver you from your all trouble. Ain't gonna happen if you still sinning. You still think you can do whatever you want to do and the Most High don't see you. Because man don't see you. Most High know. And he revealed his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Listen, verse 68. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. And they shall take away certain of you and feed you, being idle, with things offered unto idols. Or feed you with things offered unto idols. Some of you going to take it. I done heard saying, somebody, well, they gave me the pork, I'm going to eat it. Save my life, whatever. You know what it says in Isaiah 66, 15 down. Better read it for yourself. He will consume you. Fire of his wrath. 
and they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and disgrace and trodden underfoot when we mow you down, man. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Most High. And they will come after us. They shall be like madmen, sparing none. That's one of those that fear the Most High. Sparing none. They're going to be like madmen upon us. Because we the Israelites, we the ones that learning the laws of the Most High, living the laws of the, life of the Most High, and apply, applying the laws of the Most High in our life. But there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Most High. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Most High. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. See that? Take what you have and cast you out of your houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen. And they shall be tried as the gold is tried in the fire. Then you're going to know who his chosen is. Hear, O ye, my beloved. Only one that's beloved are the children of Israel. Said the Most High, Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Keep his law, says commandments, have faith in him. He say, days of trouble are at hand, like the days of trouble are at hand with us now. He said, but I will deliver you from the same. He's going to deliver us from this. We're going to be saved from this. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for the Most High is your guide. You hear that? That's the only guide we have. It's the most high. He said, don't be afraid. And don't doubt. Therefore, you're going to say, the most high is my guide. The most high going to lead me. Some of you don't believe that because you don't have faith. That's why doubt dismisses your faith. That's why I said, don't be afraid and don't doubt. Believe in the most high. That's why my side told us in uh Mark 11, 22. This is really important. Now, it's, now you got to apply this. Mark 11, 22. And my Savior shall answer and say to them, Have faith in the Most High. But verily I say to you, truly I say to you, that whosoever shall say, you got to say this, unto this mountain, this problem, this trouble, be thou removed. Get away from me and be and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt, just what we just heard, and shall not doubt in his heart, in your heart is your mind, so not doubt in, in your mind. Let's get that so you'll know. Go back a few chapters. Mark 7, 21. He already, he already defined the heart. Everything is defined in the Bible. It says, Mark 7, 21. For from within... Out of the heart of men proceedeth evil thoughts. Thoughts. Your mind. Your brain. So, the heart is talking about what you think. The mind. Going back to Mark 11 and 23. For verily I say unto you, truly I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart, which is your mind, but shall believe, have faith.